So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Denise Reichwein Lees. I'm the director of sales with MSC Cruises, and welcome to today's final um, episode, if you will, or webinar training of our MSC Groups webinar series for 2022. Today we are talking all things on how to find more groups. So we're going to take you through a number of different areas. And at the end, I'm going to throw in one other interesting idea that maybe you have not thought of. But let's go ahead and jump right in. And we want to show you how you can find more business. Some of this might be um, not necessarily new to you, but it's really intended to get you to think outside the box, right? And realize that there are opportunities all around us. <clears throat> So today our main objective is to help you identify unique markets. And if you really think about it, you know, you can't go after what you don't know exists, right? None of us, we don't know what we don't know, as we like to always say. But also you're going to be able to develop a list of potential unique market opportunities, uh, oftentimes referred to as niche uh, markets. So this is going to provide you with a big step forward on, you know, being more targeted and, and being able to find those unique uh, or niche market type group opportunities. <clears throat> so we're going to go through the training covering these main topics. And as we move forward through the presentation, I encourage you to take a lot of notes. There's going to be a lot of information I'm going to throw at you. So you're going to really need to, for those of you who are old enough, remember shorthand, you're going to need to use that shorthand um, talent, but definitely make notes as we go through. So we're going to talk about, you know, what are some of those unique markets, why they actually work, how to find them, and some additional markets to consider. So many times, you know, we don't fully understand or know what a unique market is. So the true definition of a unique or niche market is a specialized market. Um, so we define a unique market as a group who may traditionally be overlooked um, by other businesses or organizations, you know, and some of these markets are represented here just as very simple exponent, you know, examples, baby boomers, ethnic or minority groups, and believe it or not, even multi-generational and family groups. So this is literally just the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, the question begs, why do you think that unique markets work to grow your business, right? So we're going to dive in and talk a lot about that and, and how you can really grow your business. <clears throat> so there's a formula, right, for unique marketing success. And it's it's really simple. It's displayed right here. So the underserved plus a need equals a great opportunity. So this should really be your primary philosophy as you look forward in thinking about unique markets. You know, these markets are looking for a number of things that you as a travel advisor can readily provide to them, okay? Now, of course, number one, services, right? This covers a, a wide range of topics, but everything from travel needs to excellent customer service and, and your expertise, right? Your knowledge, this is why they, they come to you. But what's really very important in order for you to be successful in unique markets is understanding that specific market's needs. So knowing the unique market, researching it, living it, basically you have to become the expert in order to be successful at a particular unique market. So it's really important that you do your homework uh, because if you don't, they're going to really find out quickly that you've no idea what you're talking about when it comes to their needs. Now, with large group opportunities here, this is what's really in it for for you as a um, as an advisor, right? These groups are often very connected 
and they're going to allow you, you know, to increase your revenues by generating it from various different streams. So starting with groups, also looking at individual reservations, and ultimately ending in referrals for you. So this is what I like to call the snowball effect, right? So we take a little snowball, we start to roll it down the hill, and it builds and builds and builds. It gets bigger as by the time it gets to the bottom. Now, also, you know, let's talk about the loyalty piece of this, right? So being the unique market expert and providing the right services at the right time will allow you basically, you know, to build that loyalty with your your guest and. This applies not just to the group piece of it, but also for those individual reservation opportunities. And that referral piece of it, you know, again, being the expert, providing excellent service, delivering on, on the group or individual's needs, opens that door for you to obtaining those referrals in the end. Referrals grow your business and your revenue super, super fast. So if you aren't, and this is a side topic, but if you aren't already offering a customer loyalty program or a referral program to your clients, you really need to consider implementing one and, and very soon. Um, but that we can leave for another training. So now you're probably wondering, you know, how do you find the right unique market, right? There's so many of them. And, and how do you find the one that's right for you as an advisor and, and for your agency? So that's what we're gonna basically take a look at next. So there's, there's four different areas that we start to look at to, to zero in and find that right market, okay? So, you know, uh, we have to consider that these will help you determine where you should be looking or, or what specific market you should be looking at. So, we're going to go into detail on each of these, but starting at home, you know, what you do on a regular basis, you know, that can potentially provide you with opportunities for those unique markets. And, and we'll dive in on these again, like I said, in more detail. Your community, you know, these provide additional avenues of marketing to a specific group, if you will. And of course, networking, more, more than likely a world of opportunity is, is waiting for you. Um, you just need to be reaching out to the right people and uh, working your, your network that you already have in order to tap into those. And then of course, the internet. You know, We can't let our communities around us expand without our business opportunities expanding along with it. So we're gonna talk about how you can use the internet and ultimately, even the social media platforms that are out there that to your benefit, right? So there's there's so many questions that you can ask yourself to, to help you weed through this process of determining these unique markets um, and the ones that you should consider. So after today's training, I really recommend that you carve out additional time to sit down and really dive in on asking yourself a lot of these questions uh, that we're gonna go through. So don't forget, as I mentioned before, this is gonna be recorded and we're gonna archive that so you can reference back to that, to that recording in the future, which will help you a lot. So let's get started now. So specifically looking at home, right? So oftentimes, um, you know, I think we forget to look around us, look in our backyards, right? So, you know, you don't have to look further than than home to start finding some of these unique markets. So the first thing, of course, here is, you know, what are your interests? You know, wh what do you do? You know, take take a close look at your hobbies. You know, maybe you're a crafter or a scrapbooker or a photographer or, you know, anything, anything that you have special interest in hobbies, you know, you can pretty much see where I'm going with this. Um, but, you know, are you a social butterfly who who plans all the family gatherings and reunions? You know, take those interests and look for clubs and associations and organizations that share those same interests, right? Step outside your normal circle with those interests because taking advantage of these groups by mixing and mingling is gonna afford you that that better chance to market your services to people who share those same interests now you know what are your family interests right so does your family like to go 
biking, hiking, golfing, fishing, you know, your sports enthusiasts, for example. Um, maybe it's even something as a little less active as gamers, right? You know, a little more sedentary there, which is very popular these days. But, you know, are they on community teams or in or in sports leagues? You know, talk to those that schedule those events, talk to those coaches, see if there's an interest in the services that you have to offer. I mean, I've seen groups out there that have done literally sports clinics. You know, so so looking at those types of things are not outside of the realm of, of a possibility. So really, really good, you know, to consider your family interest as well. And then also, what's your cultural background? You know, have you tra traced your family tree? You know, everybody these days is doing Ancestry.com and myself included. And, you know, it, it's really amazing to look back and see, you know, just where our lineage is. And, and there may be places that we want to go that are related to that. So, you know, what are your cultural, ethnic and national roots? You know, family reunions, genealogical societies and other interest groups that, you know, they can utilize your travel services to go to these destinations that, you know, maybe they've only just studied in books or, or you know, online, but heard about also maybe from their family and friends and relatives. Uh, and, and this is, you know, a huge untapped market from the cultural aspect of things. And then last in the starting at home area is, you know, what have you always wanted to learn? I personally think that the best way is to try and, and, and start something that you have a lot of passion for, but maybe you've just never had time. You know, maybe you want to learn a different language. You know, maybe you want to immerse yourself in, in that opportunity. So this is a perfect chance to explore those interests and create exciting opportunities for developing that unique market approach. So take the time to think about these four things. You might quickly have been jotting down some things. So now we're going to move on to the next area, which is community. So community, taking the time to get to know your community is going to really be, you know, open up a lot of doors and opportunities in the unique markets area for you. So make sure you're jotting down answers to these questions as we go. Um, so active organizations in your community, right? So let's talk about that first. So what organizations are active the most within your, your community? You know, maybe it might be something as simple as Kiwanis or Rotary Club, maybe some of the veterans clubs like the VFW or, um, you know, other other opportunities there. You know, what about the PTA? What what cultural interest groups hold events in your community, as an example? You know, if you live in a gated community, there's a lot of those these days. You know, do they have a community center and host events? There's opportunities there for, for travel groups as well. Consider your local parks and recreation offices with your community. Um, what activities are they offering and sponsoring within, you know, the community? So also, you know, the face of the community. You know, do you have new neighbors, you know, coming in? What cultural groups are moving into your area? Are there opportunities with that? You know, we're all living in such a global society these days that many of our neighborhoods and local businesses are expanding and literally changing faces right before our eyes. So there are big opportunities as it relates to that. Again, back to that whole cultural aspect. Um, so changes within your community, you know, make sure you're taking a look around at your community. Is it growing? Is it shrinking? You know, are new businesses moving in while others might be changing, expanding, or moving out? You know, are new housing developments and schools being built in your area? I know in our area, you know, the housing boom is is still very, very big, and there's there's development happening everywhere. So we've got a lot of new people moving into our communities, and these are opportunities every second of every day that present themselves. Now, for your community, the last area here is the social events. You know, there might be certain, you know, music concerts happening in the area. You know, maybe it's a jazz opportunity or country or whatever the case may be. Family-based events, more, you know, things like cultural fest uh, festivals and things like that. 
uh, church fairs and functions. Um, what events are being held at your local library? Believe it or not, local libraries still exist. People do still like books. <laughs> so those are opportunities there. What what productions maybe are being held at a local playhouse or or a city theater if you're in a larger area? You know, are the schools in the area hosting any events? Make sure that you don't forget about elementary schools, colleges, and universities. These educational organizations also need opportunities for fundraisers. You can do groups with fundraising with them. Also, your local fire departments, any senior centers, all of these areas can take advantage of fundraising opportunities. So make sure that you're considering anything like that that's going on from social events. So each of these areas is gonna give you more ideas about who you can speak to, about your travel services that you offer. So it can open doors for business to business opportunities, such as cross marketing and bundling of services. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but make sure you're jotting down all these notes. My, my hope is that I've got those creative juices of yours uh, flowing now. So next, we're going to talk about networking. So as you probably discovered, right? So when you started your business, I would assume, you learned very quickly that networking played a key role in being able to get your business off the ground and grow. It's no different. In order to keep your business going, you have to continue marketing. So it can't just be when you first start out. It's gotta be an ongoing thing. So how can this help you in developing your unique market? So let's take a closer look at this, right? So there's several questions that you, know, you can start to answer to help you develop more inspiration on, on these unique market opportunities that might be available to you. So, you know, Chamber of Commerce, it's, it's such an old organization, but it's one that obviously works. So, you know, they can provide you with a wealth of information available about, you know, your local businesses. You know, you can find out what business are in your area. You can even attend networking events through the chamber meet those other business owners and have the opportunity to speak at those local meetings so that again you have to be out there in front of them the business isn't necessarily just going to come walking through your door you have to actively be pursuing it so get out there and and meet with them you know who they know is who you know right so it sounds so simple when you put it that way right so this is probably the number one exercise this one little bit here the number one exercise for you to to develop a network so i encourage you to sit down with a a pretty big legal pad maybe or just sit there with your your word uh microsoft word open and typing a list but make a list of all the people you know and where they work what their profession is, what organizations or associations that they belong to, and if you know, also write down their, their immediate friends, right? What trends are you start to see emerging out of this list? There might be common threads throughout this list when you start to see maybe they're all members of the same churches or maybe they're all members of the same little league team or whatever the case may be but these opportunities start to bubble up through this list. So this, like I said, is probably the simplest way to dive in and start to create that networking list. And then you can reach out to those individuals um, to see, you know, maybe they have contacts that are related to those organizations that can help you start to uncover opportunities. Personal errands, where do you go? Like you've made friends with the teller at the bank or at the dry cleaner. You know, you, you see people often maybe at your local supermarket, gas station, corner store, or other, other places that you conduct business all the time. So you need to consider looking at these businesses as opportunities to partner for discounts or services. This is where I talked before about that cross marketing opportunity where you can start to expose your database to their customers and likewise to gain exposure from one another's databases that maybe you know you you wouldn't have had access to those customers to begin with so 
this is a great opportunity. Look at the customers, the other customers that are visiting those businesses as well. You might again see those common threads. You might see people that are at the same organizations. This is a really great opportunity that is, is really quite underserviced, if you will, when you look at it from this perspective. Work with your other local businesses in that regard. Now, we talk about leisure time. <laughs> Sadly, we don't have enough leisure time these days, it seems. But where, when you do get your, your time, your downtime, you know, where are you, where are you going to spend that time? Like, where are you relaxing? If it's outside of your home, you know, is it at a local park or the movies or maybe one of the, the newer outdoor promenade type uh, shopping areas uh, or, or the library, whatever it might be, wherever you choose to relax, others are doing the same. So who else is there? Who do you see there often? You know, maybe you're going to the dog park or maybe, you know, other areas. But the point is, introduce yourself, start conversations, discuss your, your business services. You know, be sure to tie in your common leisure interest to your business services so it's relevant to their needs. And always, always, always have your business cards available with you so that you can share your contact information with them and connect at a later time. The last piece here is developing businesses. So, you know, as our society, you know, begins to see new faces, cultures, and we become more global, new businesses are gonna always emerge and those new businesses mean new opportunities. So what new restaurants, for example, are in your area? Think about how you can tie in your travel services with their clients dining experience, right? So you could you could go to that restaurant owner and say, hey, you know, maybe it's a Greek restaurant. You go to them and you say, hey, you know, I know I know you uh, you travel a lot. How would you like to host a you know a, a Greek cruise, right? So suddenly you're hosting an event in their restaurant. They're they're having their customers come in. You're going in to present. They're your Pied Piper. They are your group leader. They travel with the group as well. And, and there's a new opportunity. So you, you basically tie, tie that into it. And, you know, what other cultural stores might be in your area, uh, whether it be restaurants, whether it be actual merchandise type stores, like I think of World Market here locally. Uh, you know, Pier One is no longer in business, but World Market is one that features, you know, products from all around the world and, and foods from all around the world. So that's an opportunity where, you know, you could reach out to them to, to do something interesting with them. So take advantage of, of those newly created circumstances when these new businesses are coming into your area. Um, you might be thinking of other ideas that are coming to mind. Make sure you're, you're, you're jotting those ideas down because those are going to be potential opportunities for you. So the last here is the internet, right? This is the new yellow pages, right? We no longer, years ago, I remember, you know, it used to be always, you know, the yellow pages looking for new opportunities. So, you know, there's always additional resources, right? So we need to look to the internet. It is has a wealth of information for us to locate these unique markets. You know, we live in a big world, right? But the internet brings it into a much smaller uh, playing arena for us. So it brings us all closer together and information is just, you know, immediately available to us. So it's endless, endless possibilities for these unique markets. So, you know, if you've moved into a new area or you're looking to expand your business into a particular area, you know, there may be areas that are thriving with people relocating and, and that's something that you want to, you know, make sure that you're tapping into. So when was the last time you searched in your area for new organizations and businesses? You know, that's the question. Sometimes we're so busy with our day-to-day -day work that we're, we're never looking for those new opportunities that are literally right in our backyards. So, you know, if there's new growth and development, like I mentioned before, there's also going to be, if there's new housing, there's going to be new businesses, right? So, you need to be able to come, become familiar with those new opportunities, those new businesses that are coming in. New business, again, means new opportunity. You know, the obvious area that I do want to mention here first is, you know, the social media, right? There's endless ways to connect with local community groups via the internet and also social media platforms. 
So be sure to start to search for group pages, for example, on Facebook, local community pages where you can join and, and position your agency for opportunities with these unique markets um, within the community. But let's not forget to consider a few other areas that you can easily locate on the internet. Essentially, you know, we've got the good old yellow pages, as I said before, so, so much more available to us on the internet. And let's dive into these a little bit. I did mention specialty stores and or businesses. So um, you can certainly tie in your travel services with some of these. I know that there's a lot of e-commerce going on these days, but there is still a lot of local business going on as well. So I mentioned World Market previously. I mean, who knows? There might be a luggage store. There might be, you know, some other travel related um, type of, you know, maybe you go to REI or, or, or uh, L.L. Bean and you start to talk to them about, you know, possible you know, adventure type travel, you know, soft adventure. So these are just ideas, again, just to get you thinking. So basically you want to approach those owners to discuss, you know, being their travel expert for destinations that they might feature uh, with their products or services that they're offering. <clears throat> now, moving on to professional organizations, you know, what, what professional organizations are in your area. So consider accounting, marketing, computer engineering, other organizations. These all, or, or I should say not these, but any organization that has the need for continuing education is something you can tap into as a unique market. So the idea here is that they could do a cruise group with you where they're going to host trainings on board, right? So it's those are built-in opportunities for groups. So definitely consider any business that has um, continuing education, you know, programs and opportunities. Now that takes us into the educational institution piece of it too, right? So you know, are you currently the travel expert for your local community college or university? You know, is your travel agency, you know, the choice of these schools? And if it isn't, it should be, right? So what you want to do is, first of all, determine what schools and areas are in, you know, are, or organizations uh, from an educational purpose are in your area, right? Re you know, make sure you're looking at their websites. Get familiar with their curriculum. You know, seek out those opportunities to become a guest speaker for them. You know, whether it's travel and tourism, maybe it's geography or cultural classes, language classes, whatever, find out what those organizations um, are offering on their campuses and how you can approach them about incorporating your services and your expertise into it. It could open additional doors. Now, other groups, you know, that might exist, so organizations, associations, clubs, you know, guys, Google, right? It's a verb now to Google. So make sure that you're looking for them in your area uh, and, and it will definitely open up opportunities for you. So now that we've got you thinking about a whole, uh, you know, a whole new way, right? On how to uncover these unique opportunities and markets, you need to be, you know, like I said, if you're, if you're not jotting down those notes fast and furious right now, um, you need to carve out the time to do it. So we've looked at a lot of areas that you can start to determine and develop the unique markets. But, you know, what if you're already targeting a lot of these? You know, what you're looking for new stuff. You know, what there are some groups that you can also consider. And we'll talk about who they are and uh, who you should contact and, and how you go about doing that. So we're going to go into a lot of detail here. So, again, continue taking notes, guys, because it'll definitely be helpful. So other markets to consider right it's it's all about diversity these days so one of the main reasons that people don't seek out unique markets especially for the groups here is they may not be you might not be familiar enough with them in order to approach them you might feel uncomfortable because you might not feel like you're the expert right so one thing i want to point out is that we can help you break down some of these barriers you know so that you get a little bit more comfortable to know where to go to get the business. But remember, 
when it comes to all of these groups that we're going to talk about now, MSC Cruises offers the largest global destination choice, which are perfect for all of these markets. Okay. So let's first talk about ethnic based groups. How do you research these groups? Right. So do your research on, for example, fraternities, sororities, professional organizations, and associations that are affiliated with anything ethnic based. It could be, you know, related to certain studies. It could be certain, you know, locations or, or schools, you name it. But if you know of particular ethnic population in your area that has that common thread, right? There is opportunities there. If you don't know about the culture, never, ever assume anything. Make sure that you are educating yourself. Read publications, whether they're in print or online, that reflect these groups. And that way, these publications are also very much geared towards those that are planning these types of vacations. So get familiar, do the research, and then you can start to make the connections. Culinary groups and schools. Many schools and companies are coming into our communities now, and they're all based around the joy of food. I know my life is for sure. So since the advent of like the Food Network and other channels, including all of the, you know, the more recent streaming services, many of your potential clients are learning to enjoy food from so many different regions and cultures around the world. I can't think of a better way to introduce them to your travel services that you offer than offering them the opportunity to enjoy a trip to maybe a specific destination to experience that type of food firsthand and locally. You need a place to start though, right? So my suggestion here is try a local culinary academy or university. Reach out, you know, sometimes they have tech programs in some of the high schools, um, but the culinary approach with education is definitely one way to go to try and uncover those. LGBTQ groups. Our community is greatly and largely made up of LGBTQ population. They definitely travel a lot. They have interests to travel and make sure that you're connecting with local groups and organizations and seek out those community events to tap into the endless opportunities associated with LGBTQ. But again, you must make yourself familiar with their needs as you would with any of these other groups that we're discussing today. Food and wine clubs. So do you have an upscale food store in your area? I'm thinking like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, World Market. Also think about wine clubs, certain wine, you know, food and wine uh, and, and uh, you know, wine and alcohol stores. It, it varies from uh, location, to location, location to location throughout the country. But these all present an opportunity for you to land new customers. So offer to do a travel night to discuss a specific destination based upon a selected menu or a tasting, for example. Offer to do a travel column in their newsletters that they're pushing out to their clients. You know, leave, maybe create a, a leave behind, like a destination type card with your picture and your contact information and highlight a specific area to include maybe a recipe on or a recommendation of certain wines or foods uh, on the back of that card. You know, when you're working with a wine club, you know, offer to bring the experience of that country of the wine that they're featuring to their members. Think outside the box, get creative. There's some really cool things. There are some of these wine and alcohol locations that have tasting, private tasting rooms that you can do events. So consider that for um, opportunities to unfold. Then of course, we have cultural interest groups. You know, if you have a large population of a, of a particular culture, you know, in your area, approach them about taking a trip to their family homeland or to their heritage, right? 
offer to share additional information about the homeland. Do your research, super important. This way you can share things with them that they may not already know, right? Especially if you visited the area, you might have certain areas and, and places that you like to go that you have a lot of inside information on. Religious institutions. So traveling to sites deemed holy, you know, by various uh, religious organizations or religions in general, it's a great way to grow your business. You know, um, repeat travelers are seeking to see as many of these locations as they possibly can. So they're oftentimes will go back, you know, again and again. There's opportunities to offer retreats, for example, for these organizations and or parishioners to come together with their religious leaders to do, you know, maybe couples counseling or family and youth group trips. These are all opportunities. Professional organizations, I cannot say enough or stress enough to you how important these are about these groups. Now, important these groups are rather. We've already discussed them at length. Um, and, and this could be one of the biggest sources of repeat business for you, whether it be groups, individuals, um, or referrals. And this group should never ever be overlooked. This alone stems out to everything from incentive travel to meetings, continuing education. Uh, I mean, you name it, this is a big bucket. So it really comes down to reaching out to businesses um, and finding out their specific needs and, and really targeting them based on those needs. Last but not least on this slide here, I've got the colleges and the universities. So we've touched on, on this quite a bit already, um, but this is just a reminder that it's another source that often goes underserved and overlooked. So, you know, it could be opportunities for them to extend that education overseas in specific destinations based on the curriculum that they have. So obviously there's many, many avenues to consider with all of these that we've talked about here today, but I hope that you've been busy making those notes and that we've got you really, really thinking. Um, there are many more uh, ideas that may come to mind. So I encourage you to continue brainstorming whether you're uh, you know, a, one, a one person agency or a, a large agency, uh, get your teams together and really brainstorm. But I do have another uh, idea that I wanna share with you about groups. The come go with me idea. So as an advisor, your customers come to you because you are the expert, right? They come to you for guidance, they come to you for recommendations. They also, they respect you, they trust you, and most likely, if you invite them to go with you to a particular destination or on a particular cruise, chances are they're gonna feel a little bit safer because they're with the expert, right? They're going with you because you've got the inside line on everything there is to see and do in those destinations. So I. I would suggest starting in a place that maybe you've never been able to get to. Start with a destination that you've always dreamed of going to and start to build that cruise idea around that. Feature it as maybe an owner's you know, departure or a president's you know, departure. And you can bundle your pricing. So just one example would be, you know, you're gonna make it one big package where you know, maybe they meet at your office, they board the motor coach, take them to the airport, get on the flight, transfer from the airport to a local hotel, stay in the hotel for a day or two doing city tours and really unique dining experiences and things like that. Transfer from the hotel to the ship, have the cruise, do unique experiences on that cruise, group excursions, transfer from the ship back to the airport and fly home. and then back on the motor coach, back to your office where they all depart from there. This is just one example of great opportunities. You should be hosting a come go with me type trip every year to a different destinations. 
Many agencies have had great success with this. So if this is something you're not already doing, I highly, highly encourage you to start thinking about putting something like this together. And we can definitely help you do that. We've got destinations around the world off the beaten path and can definitely give you some really, really interesting um, ideas. In the end, what I do want you to remember in all of this is the idea of today's training was to get you thinking about what unique markets are out there, why they work so well, how do you find the right one that's for you? I'm not telling you to go out and hit all of these, right? I'm telling you to find one that you can specialize in and be successful at because maybe you have passion for it or interest for it or it, it serves a, a need in your community. You know, many of the agencies that I know that specialize in a particular market are highly successful because they've become the master of it, if you will. Instead of being jack of all trades and doing every kind of group known to man, they've decided to focus on that and, and be the subject matter expert and fulfill the need for that specific that specific market. So I encourage you to do that. So again, take the time to think more about how you can uncover these opportunities. I know we've talked about so many ways to do that. Um, but you know what, at the end of the day, if you come away from here with one solid lead and idea that pans out for you, it was worth the time. And in the end, that's what matters. So we wanna say, we hope you found the series to be beneficial. We, uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate all your hard work, all your efforts, and we thank you. And we'll see you next time in our next series. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye.